Welcome to God's Business, the number one show for Christian entrepreneurs. I dropped a solo episode today that's absolutely fire. It was actually recorded as I was doing a training for our King's Brotherhood Elite. We do calls every Wednesday inside of our Elite Level program. It's a 12-month program where we have three events a year. We have weekly calls and we really grow deeply inside of Brotherhood. All of these guys are running profitable companies, super inspiring guys. They could be teaching the majority of these. I was preparing for our Wednesday call. I felt like I was just asking God, what should I talk about? He took me to Deuteronomy 28 and I went through it, wrote down everything, prepared for this talk and dropped this bomb before we went into our mastermind group meetings on Deuteronomy 28, the blessings of God that he has for your life and how where you're at right now and where you want to be is the exact same of what you know now and what you don't know. And as soon as you know what you don't know, you can now enter into the life that you want to enter into. And so Deuteronomy 28 is going to show you exactly how to do that. And I break it down here the same way that I do inside of our Elite Mastermind. Also, if you are not involved with the King's Brotherhood on Facebook, that is our free group. You go to facebook.com, go check out the King's Brotherhood on Facebook. If you're watching on every audio platform, make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a review. We read every single one of them. If you want to watch the video version, head over to YouTube. Go hit subscribe, ring the bell so that you get notified when I drop the interviews and solo episodes just like this. Enjoy. Uh, when it comes to salespeople, I think it's very interesting. I wrote these three things down that I think are, are really important for all of us, but there's three core things uh, that every single salesperson and every single sales team needs to crush it. And one of the first things they need is belief in the product, right? They need to have belief and they want to hear testimonials that the product actually works, right? So that's the first thing that they have to know is that the thing is actually transforming lives. So if they're selling it all day, they don't know anything about the outcome of the product. They can get discouraged because they're like, I'm selling this all day, but like, what are we really doing for people? And so this is why every team meeting cadence that you ever hear of, or if you go into CEO operating system, go to the meeting cadence section, you'll see that testimonials is the most common thing that you start a meeting out with. Why it builds the belief for everyone that, my goodness, we're changing lives. And so they have to have belief around the product. And a lot of times we'll share stories and outcomes for that. Now, I, I want you guys to think of this for you. Like, are you diving in and going through what is the thing, the thing that you've been put on this earth to do inside of business? Have you been reviewing what the product and service and what the disciplines of your efforts and the fruit of those efforts, the fruit of your discipline, have you been looking at what it's actually doing for people? It's so easy to look forward oh man, or look at your last couple conversations or the one bad message over a hundred good messages and forget again that gets us to lose sight of that excitement to go share our message. And so the first thing I wanna ask you is, are you looking at the testimonials to continue to build the belief of your product? Number two is the belief in the vehicle. Like, is this the best place to put my time? Each one of you guys have chosen, chosen where you place your time. And I believe that that's been from the leading of God because it says that you choose your path, but God directs your steps. So inside of that, going back and reaffirming yourself, why am I in this exact place that I am right now? Why am I in this business? Why am I doing this? How did I come to this conclusion? We've talked about many times here about Israelites leaving slavery, getting stuck in the wilderness and dreaming of going back to slavery because of how predictable and amazing it was. Why? Because they forgot why they got into the new vehicle. I like when we're selling a product, we want to get people into a brand new vehicle. Hey, this is the best way to get from A to B. For all of us, we are in a vehicle and we got there for a reason and reminding ourselves, why did we get back into this so we can commit back to that? And the last one is belief in, in themselves. And, and that belief in themselves more comes back to, are they capable and equipped? And I believe for all of us, what I think is so amazing is God never, one, calls the qualified. Never. Never does God call the qualified or else David would have never been chosen out of all of his brothers, etc. Solomon was born out of an adulterous relationship, like not, to, not the perfect whole scenario going down, but God qualifies the called and the called are the ones that are obedient to him, the ones that walk in character. What I'm so excited about coming into this May retreat, uh, outside of the fact that this exact style scenario is what changed my life forever, that when I was talking to a man yesterday, 
we are going through all these different possibilities in life. And there's these, these things called defining moments that I talk about regularly that shift life forever. And it was actually me going to a retreat just like this that actually sparked me down the path to create King's Brotherhood. And if it wasn't for that decision seven years ago, eight years ago now, yeah, eight years ago, then I wouldn't be here talking about this and glorifying God together on this call. And I just think that there's something just so profound in that. But scripture says this, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. And it just crushed me when I read that this morning going, wow, how often have I went after the skill set and equipping thinking if I just get the tactics, the skill set, and we need these things, but God doesn't call people to have tactics and skills and all that stuff figured out. That's not who he brings in, right? He doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the people that are called to the duty that he's called them to do. And we go after that and we get ourselves around bad company. And then it ends up corrupting the very thing that God's looking for in your life, which is the character that's built through obedience. And we'll talk about that for one second. When we look at the Old Testament, we look at like the law, right? And if you go through Deuteronomy, you'll see that there's a lot of laws prior to Deuteronomy 28. If you look at Deuteronomy 26, it talks a little bit about tithing and it talks about uh, first fruits. Uh, and then it'll go through more things. If you do this, then you're cursed. If you do this, then you're cursed. If you do this, then you're cursed. And it gets to this point where it's like, bro, how are we supposed to walk in blessing and be obedient if there's so many different things that we're meant to do to live a fruitful life, because that's the point, right? Is God wants you to live a fruitful and blessed life, and this is the path to do it. He's saying, this is the vehicle. Do this. And what they saw was that it was written down on stone. You guys can say stone out loud. Say stone. It was written down on stone. And it was written down on stone. This is, if you do these things, this is bad. This is what takes you out of the will of God. This is what separates you from God and blessing and all these things. And it was so difficult. And we look at now and why this is encouraging now is because Jesus came and it said that now the law is not just written on stone, but the law is now written on your heart. That every single thing that we've done wrong of disobedience and anything that you can fill the gap in with that that he's the one who actually stood in for us so that we may receive his portion. So what I'm about to go over in these blessings are no longer entered into because you're going to do a great job. Like the whole point was that it, you couldn't do it. Like it showed people why they needed Christ, why you needed the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, all right, if this is it, like, whoops, I almost made it through this hour. But I'm willing to forfeit that I'm, that I'm going to get this blessing through my own work and instead, I'm going to honor the work that Jesus did. And then because of his work, enter in the blessing that he deserved. And I'm going to walk you through a couple of what those blessings are because they're actually your inheritance. What I love about it is it says this. This is so cool. I have my Bible here. I wanted to read it in a different translation, but I normally read in, in New King James Version just because this is my favorite commentary. Yet, it's not my favorite thing to read out loud. Remember, I graduated the 1.8 GPA. God doesn't call the qualified, qualifies the call, which is what I'm going to read to you guys. But one of the cool things I love about this is it says that, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. And I think that that was like probably the best part that I read before I ever got into what the blessings that God says, this is what you deserve. Like this is what you're going to get. Not because of what you do or anything, but just because you're saying, Jesus, I know that you died so that I may receive what you're supposed to have, and this is what you're supposed to have, and this is my portion. I wrote this down for you. The difference between where you are and where you want to be is exactly the same as what you know and what you have not learned. This is why if the man does not grow, the business doesn't grow. If we do not grow, if we don't learn anything different, if we don't know what God says, bro, where are you going to enter in? And the good thing is, is these blessings are going to pursue you. You guys cool with that? I love it. So I talked about that in Deuteronomy 27, it talks about even laws on stones. Like that's even what it's talked about. I want you to know that these laws are now written on your heart. There's also a place for disobedience. But it says that if you love me, you'll obey my commands. And, and when you listen to that, depending on what type of dad you had, there's a very interesting way you can perceive that. It could be like, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. Yet, what it, what it is is showing is it's a fruit of loving God. It's like a response. 
It's like a fruit of an example of if you love me, one of the ways to tell, one of the ways to measure is if you're desiring to obey what he says. And the benefit of obeying what he says is even this right here. I'm going to read Deuteronomy 28 to you guys. And then I want to give you guys a, a topic to go into with elite teams. Now it shall come to pass if you delightly and diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, and that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Uh, but a lot of these are pretty crazy. And if I stop on everyone, it's like too crazy. All these bla- blessings shall come to you, come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. That's a promise. Blessed shall, be, shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall the fruit of your body be, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall, be, blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground. Isn't it interesting that he said that twice on the things that most people are most worried about? It's like, okay, I get the future generations, but he's literally talking about the very things that people are all so obsessed about is, okay, but what about my business and the things I care about and this thing and that thing and my family? Said it twice. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give you rain for your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. So specific, all the work of your hand. And I'm just saying this because... It's so easy to allow the experiences that we have in life to shift the standard of life that we expect to live. I just went through this. I don't believe that biblically we are meant to ever get sick, ever. Yet I had an experience. But am I going to allow what I believe God's saying to shift because of an experience? Or am I going to continue to believe what God says until my experiences start changing? And I'm just saying that this is the line in the sand as a community growing together. It says, The Lord will open up to you as good treasure the heavens and give you rain for your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. This is one thing. This is the one that uh, my friend touched on yesterday as I talked to him, that really inspired me to open up this chapter. He said, You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I've commanded you and carefully observe them, so you shall not turn aside to any other gods, etc. He will make you a leader, not a follower. I've always said since the very beginning of this community, I was like, I don't want followers. I was like, I don't care about IG and YouTube and all this stuff. I was like, I don't want followers. I want leaders. That's what I want. What's been the very first thing that I preached from stage, my very first event, 2017, the first men's event, the first brotherhood I ever did. I have a clip from the video that says the entire point of this is because God has called you guys, truthfully, because it's, I'm here to rate, you guys are going to be the ones who reach the most amount of people, not me. The collective of you guys are the ones. And it's because that as a four-dimensional businessman, putting God first, allowing him to be your multiplier, putting God, Jesus in the center, Holy Spirit is the covering, God is the multiplier in your life, making your health a priority, making your family a priority, and prospering in business is going to transform your household. These, these blessings we just read are built for your household. They're going to pursue your household. If you'll just hold those things, know about them, 
surround yourself with good company because we don't want that to corrupt the character that disqualifies people from the blessing. Because you can run away from it all you want. Go for it. Or you can receive what Jesus died for. The entire point was that as it transforms your household, that it'll inspire other men. And it'll lead them to live that lifestyle and transform their household. And I have this quote where I was like, man, if you could change a house, you could change a city. And if you could change a city, you could change a state. And if you could change a state, you could change a country. If you change a country, you can change the world. And that we're going to consult every major world leader on how you guys transformed your household and how they should lead their country. And this 2017, right, my, our first, I had like a thousand followers, you know? So it was like, you know, a thousand leaders. And I, I truly believe that right here it just says, you shall lend to many nations, but shall not borrow. And I look at that and just think about real quick how big a nation is. You can Google the smallest nations. I just had done it before because I'm, this guy, I didn't get to fact check it yet, but this guy I was talking to yesterday, he was like, I think the smallest nation is like, th like 3 billion like GDP. You guys are called to lend to nations. What does that look like? And can this be your new standard? Not in a way where you, oh, I have to work so much harder and all. No, these guys all had the same amount of hours. Solomon had the same amount of hours in the day. He didn't even have IG. Cody going viral on reels, didn't have any of that. Like he didn't have the opportunity. If anything, like we have way easier. Like you got AI and software and like helpers all over the place, bro. Yet these promises are from God. Let's make this, De this a Deuteronomy 28 meeting, a, a Deuteronomy 28 community where the standard in which we are commanding our life to live, the expectations we have for our life, that we're not allowing our environment or our current experiences to start shifting what we believe of life. But in one accord, as a brotherhood, coming together and saying, this is what God said for those who are obedient. I love God. I want to be obedient. God, give us the strength to be obedient. Make us right. Wash us away based on what you did and have us enter in to what you have promised. Have these blessings relentlessly pursue us where you put us high above the nations of the earth that the blessings would overtake us you'd bless us in the city and in the country and that you'd have us be so prosperous that you shall lend to many nations it even said if you keep the commandments of the lord your god and walk in his ways then all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the lord and they shall be afraid of you is what it says here. But right before that, they shall see that you're called in the name of the Lord. Like through walking this out, it didn't say because you yell it or talk about it or because you preach about it. It's like, no, as you do this, everyone will see that God's with you. And I'm sure for a lot of people that is scary. I mean, shoot. People in the world right now get FOMO if they just miss a, a, a hangout. Like they start freaking out that they're falling behind if they just miss a call. Like if they just don't work on the weekend. Like of course these homies are going to be afraid. You are out there being obedient to God, being blessed by God because of what he said. Not because of anything, nothing to do with you, bro. Like doesn't matter who wants to receive it. God is willing to dish it out. And you're lending to nations and not even having to borrow from them. Bro, I would be freaked out too. And it's inside of that that I really believe that, that you guys will make the greatest impact, no matter what your motivations are. I get that, that I've gone through times where when people would preach at me, bro, I was just like, I just want my family to be good. Like, I just want to walk in what God has for me. Like, I could give a rip if it's like helping other people. Yeah, I will tell you that also on the opposite side, if, if you're looking to make an impact in people's lives for Christ and doing it through your calling and not just through talking, but actually doing, this is the path is to be obedient, obedient and walk in this. And God's gonna bless you. And through that blessing, inspire other people saying, wow, God must be with them.